Hello, I'm Dr. Kayleen Asbo, the cultural historian for the Santa Rosa Symphony. We want to invite you to attend an upcoming concert entitled Shadows and Sunshine. On January 11th, 12th, and 13th, Francesco Lecce Chong will take the stage to lead us through a program that weaves together the threads of dark and light in a tapestry inspired by nature. Our program opens with contemporary composer Missy Mazzoli's Sinfonia for Orbiting Spheres. The title itself is a clue and a pun. A sinfonia was both a form of Baroque music for chamber orchestra, and it was an Italian instrument that was similar to a hurdy-gurdy with its haunting, unusual, almost wheeze box sound. Missy Mazzoli's work will evoke this sonic landscape at the same time that it points out towards the cosmos. Our second work is Jan Sibelius's Violin Concerto. The first movement is dark, filled with melancholy beauty. The soloist does not merely respond to the orchestra, rather it takes and leads them through a sonic landscape that's filled with starkness, passion, and desolation. The second movement is lyrical in the key of B-flat major, and yet underneath the surface sunshine lurks dissonance in the orchestra. The third movement is the most technically demanding, filled with double stops, lightning fast runs. It is heroic, bold, sardonic. And it ends in a triumphant key of D major. Composers like to play, then, with these different colors. Minor. Major. In Sibelius, we have B minor, second movement, B flat major, finally ending in the triumphant key of D major. The composer Johannes Brahms loved to weave together major and minor, sunshine and shadow, just the way that he experienced in nature itself. After intermission, we're going to turn to one of his most beloved pieces, the Symphony No. 2. As a 20-year-old, Johannes Brahms was lauded by composer and music critic Robert Schumann as the next Beethoven. That idea terrified the young man, and subsequently he put off writing a symphony for a very long time. He was well into his maturity when his first symphony was premiered, and indeed it was hailed as Beethoven's tenth. 
His second symphony, in many ways, can be seen as his response or conversation with his role model, Beethoven. Because just as Beethoven's Symphony No. 6, also featured this season with the Santa Rosa Symphony, evoked the landscape of the natural countryside, Brahms, too, had some of his deepest, most inspiring moments when he would go on vacation and wander through the woods. His second symphony was created during a summer then, when he went off to the wilds of Austria, hiking through the mountains and walking through the woods, wandering next to the waters. He drank of the inspiration there. In fact, at one point he said, there are so many melodies floating around here, I'm afraid I might step on one of them. This gorgeous symphony then unfolds with a sense of natural splendor and lushness, and Brahms weaves together shadow and sunshine in unique and marvelous ways. The first movement of this majestic work, then, begins in the key of D major. But the second theme is where the melodies blossom and bloom into absolute riot of exquisite melody. This is what it sounds like on the piano at the entrance of the second theme. Notice how he goes back and forth between minor and major, minor and major. Moments of dissonance, ouch, that then melt into sweetness. If this piece sounds familiar to those of you who have never heard it before, it may be because there's an echo of another song. This melody that he gives us in its minor key glory to begin, is a darker cousin to a more famous song. The famous cradle song. Notice what happens when we go from the minor key here to the major key. He plays back and forth with this, so we have the echoes of a lullaby, but cast in its minor key. The second movement here, Adagio non troppo, also weaves together sunshine and shadow in a slower movement. The third will be lilting and graceful, allegretto grazioso, a scherzo with a haunting oboe melody. And finally, the work ends with triumphant brass, the allegro con spirito a burst into the sunshine with a thread still of darkness. Brahms was one of those composers who could hold both hands full and say, life, just like nature, is dark 
and light, joy and melancholy. Santa Rosa Symphony, under the direction of Francesco Lecce Chong, invites you to come to Weill Hall at the Green Music Center to have your heart warmed by this lush, lyrical, and loving program that weaves together nature in shadow and sunshine. One hour before each program, our conductor will take the stage in conversation about music, its mysteries, and its power to lead us into light. I'm Dr. Kayleen Asbo, and I invite you here to the Petaluma Historical Library and Museum if you'd like to follow the thread of inspiration across music, art, and nature throughout the centuries. I hope to see you soon. Thank you.